Hey, welcome back. If you've been following along, you should have a dragon now that kind of balances over a tree stump. It's a super fun game, but it's time to make it a little bit more interesting. If we crash, you should be dying, and if we jump too high, you should be dying, but there's not much to do. So let's make this, well, fun. Let's make the tree move first. To do that, we're gonna go back into the Assets and Scripts folder. We'll right click and create a new C Sharp script. We're gonna call this Move Left. Capital M and a capital L there. And I'm gonna open it up just by hitting enter on it. Oh, it didn't open. Now if this happens and you go into the editor and you don't see it, you have a couple options. We can go to the Solution Explorer and browse for it. I can just go back in here and double click on it again and it'll usually open right up. Now, again, I don't need my start section, so I'm just gonna select that all and, well, do you wanna delete it? Yeah, let's delete it. Let's clear all that out. We'll clear out line seven and we'll get rid of lines one and two that we're just not using. Again, a lot of the time those are very helpful and it's nice to have them in there. They're not in there for no reason. We're just not using them now and I feel like it kind of clutters the code and shows a lot more than we need to see. So in our update method, we want this thing to just move, well, left, that's it. Literally the name of the script says what we want to do. So to do that, we're gonna call a special method on our transform component. We'll say transform right here on line eight dot and look for translate. That's the one that we want to choose. So we're going to choose transform.translate and we'll use an open parentheses with shift and nine again. And here we need to give it a vector three. Luckily there's a special vector three called vector three dot left and we can use that. So we're going to move it to the left. Now let's add a semicolon at the end of that and save our script off. Everything should be clear. We're gonna go back into the editor and select the tree. Now we're gonna, we've got stumps zero selected here and I'm gonna add a component and I wanna clear this out and start typing and find the move left script. I'll add that move left script and let's hit play and see what happens. Well, I can kinda see it. I'm gonna zoom out here on the scene view. Look at how fast that tree stump is going. You see, it's kind of flying right past. That's a little too fast. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna grab this tree stump and I'm gonna move it over here to the right so that it comes onto the screen in front of the dragon. Let's see that. You can see that's definitely way too fast. Definitely in here, it's very obvious. So we want to slow that thing down. Now, we also need to take into account our frame rate. Let's open up the move left script again. I'm gonna double click on it. Remember, our update is called once per frame. If we move with vector three dot left, what that's actually doing is moving left one entire meter. So here we're back in Unity. I'm gonna select the stump. I'm gonna go to the move tool right here. Select the move tool. And if I hold down control, what it's gonna do is it's gonna snap one meter every movement. So look at the X position, it's at 13. If I snap to the left, it's gonna go to 12, 10, 9, 8. You can see how much it's moving each step, and that's what it's moving every single frame. So if I'm moving 100 frames a second, it's going flying right to the end. If I was going really slow, maybe one frame a second, whatever, it'd go slow and stuttery, but that's not what we want either. We want a nice, smooth movement that doesn't care what our frame rate is. But luckily, we have an easy way to do that. We'll go back to move left, and what we wanna do is multiply this vector three times a special variable. Now, to do that, we're gonna add a space after the word left before that closing parentheses, and we need to add in the special symbol for multiplication in code, which is a star. That's just shift and the number eight, or if you have a numpad, you may have a star key on there as well. Now, we wanna multiply that with that star times a time dot delta time variable. This is the amount of time that's passed since the last frame. What this does is smooth it out so that if we run at 100 frames a second, it moves a tiny little bit. If we move it one frame a second, well, it moves an entire amount. So to do that, we call time with capital T dot delta time. And this is included in that Unity engine. If we got rid of the using Unity engine, that wouldn't show up. That's one of the things that's kind of there by default in this. So now we're multiplying it by time dot delta time, but I also want to give us a little bit of speed control. So let's add in one more multiplier there. So after the E for delta time, I'll add another star and we're gonna call this speed. So I'm just gonna make a variable, I'll call it S-P-E-E-D with capital S and I'm gonna hit control and period and select generate a field to make this into a variable. 
And then I'll go here and select this private word. Just double clicking on it selects an entire word, by the way. So if you ever need to replace a word, just double click it. Um, and I want to replace this with public. This is again going to make it show up in the inspector. So the last thing to do, well, is to change this because when we generated this field, it generated the wrong type. I actually don't want a vector three here. And I wanted to show this because I do this all the time. I generate these fields and I meant to have a floating point number, which is a number with a decimal. So what I can do is just double click on the vector three and change this to float, F-L-O-A-T. That makes it a number with a decimal point. An integer or an INT is a number without a decimal. A float is one with one. And I want to give it a default value. So before the semicolon and after the D on the speed, I'm going to put a space and an equals and then another space just to keep it clean. And I'm going to put a value of one. So I'm just assigning a default speed of one. I'll save that off with control S, make sure I don't have any errors, no red squigglies. And then I'll go back into Unity. I want to select my tree stumps. Just watched it compile. Hopefully you saw that there and there are no errors. Remember, if you do have errors, go to the console window and look there. It should tell you exactly where the problem is, what line it's on, and what the error is. And if you don't see the console window, it's under window and then general and console. Huh? Shift control C is the hotkey for it as well. So here we are. We've got the stumps and we want to get the move left script on there. Oh, it's already on there. That's right. We put that on earlier. So we just want to see what it does. Let's hit play. Let's watch it. There we go, the tree stump is coming along. Yeah, that looks pretty slow. I'm balancing, but yeah, that's way, way, way too easy. So I'm gonna stop playing. Let's change the speed to something like five. Hit play. And there we go, we've got a tree stump coming along and if I hit it, boom, I die. Pretty cool, right? We've got a tree now, it works. Um, if I select this tree, maybe I wanted to have two trees. So I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna right click it and hit duplicate. The hotkey for this, by the way, is Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac. And you see now I have a stumps zero and a stumps zero with parentheses and a one. If I click on them though, it looks like I just have one thing. The reason for that is that they're on top of each other. So I'm gonna select the second one. And I'll just grab the red arrow and drag it. I'll put it right there. And let's set a speed that's different too. Let's set this to like a six and I'll hit play. We should watch and you see that they're slowly getting apart from each other and then the second one comes by. And maybe setting the speed value to something lower would have been a little bit more interesting. So go ahead and try that. Try a lower value, see what it does as we adjust the speed. Eventually though, we're gonna make all of our stumps the same speed because we want our ground to go at the same speed. We'll have enemies that have varying speed though. So we've got our stump here. I'm, we've got our second stump and I want these stumps to be reusable as well. So let's, let's hit play again and just watch. Look at the stumps and see what happens when they get to the end of the screen. They just keep going and they go and they go and they go forever and they're just never gonna stop going by. What I wanna do is reuse these. So I'm gonna select this first stump and I'm gonna drag it over to the left until it's off the screen. And I'll go a little bit further than off the screen and maybe out to here and look at what that X position is. Looks like it's about negative 15. Remember as we go from the center, it's gonna go negative to the left and positive to the right. And then on the right hand side, no, oh, positive 15 is way off the screen. So what I'm gonna do is if the stump goes below negative 15 on the X, we're gonna warp it back here and just reuse that thing. So to do it, we'll go to our move left script. And in our update, after line 10, we'll add another if statement. Now I'm gonna add two lines just cause I like to have some extra space between my commands and my other statements. And then I'll start typing if with lowercase if open parentheses with shift nine. And we wanna look at that transforms X position. So we call transform dot position. Again, I'm just starting to type and hitting enter to autocomplete dot X. And we wanna look if it's less than negative 15. If it is less than negative 15, then what we wanna do is move it to the right well, to positive 15 or right 30 meters. To do that, we can say transform dot position and then this is gonna be the fun one, plus equals, which is going to add to it. It's gonna change the position and add in another vector. And we're gonna add in vector three dot right times 30. So what this is gonna do is take our position and move it to the right 30 units. So we have right and we multiplied it by 30. Now we have a couple ways we could write this out. I've written it like this. Another way we could do this is 
plus new vector three and give it a 30 for the X, a zero for the Y and a zero for the Z and then a semicolon. And if I put the comment lines here, the two slashes, that makes it so this code doesn't run. So this would also work. This would do exactly the same thing. We could also set the position to a new position. But the reason I don't like setting the position is that we have to put in a Y and a Z value. And then if I want to set this position, I'm going to have to either read these and put them into here, or I'll have to hard code them and I don't really want to do that. So I like to just move it like this. It makes it nice and smooth, keeps everything spaced away and just works. So either one of these options works. I think um, this is probably technically a little bit more performance. So we'll just save it like this, but don't worry if you went the other way, works fine too. Now I'll jump back into Unity and let's hit play. And if I can balance, we should see my stumps move to the left and then reappear on the right. So we'll balance, balance, balance. There goes the stump. Look at that. It reappears on the right, and it just keeps going forever and ever. And eventually, that that second stump there is going to catch up to the other one because it's got a slightly higher speed. This is why I said we keep the speeds the same because that looks weird, right, when they get like that and they're moving at separate speeds on there. So there we go. We've got a little bit of a challenge now. We've got a game where we can avoid stumps, and they come back, and it's basically feeling a little bit like Flappy Bird. Don't worry though, we're gonna keep going further. We're gonna start adding in some enemies. And in the next section, we're gonna dive into prefabs, which are gonna be a lot of fun. So if you're enjoying this, make sure that you like, subscribe, share, comment, all that fun stuff. And then just come over to the next section as soon as you're ready.